seated. Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning on this Good Friday, I want to talk about hands. I want to talk about all kinds of hands. I want to talk about your hands and my hands. I want to talk about the hands of Jesus. I want to talk about angels' hands. And I want to talk about the hands of the Heavenly Father. But first, I want you to listen to four passages from Scripture. I've written them on the back of the worship folder for you to follow along. And I want you to watch for the word hands. The first from Mark chapter 14. It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. From Luke chapter 24. See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see that I have. From 1 Timothy chapter 2. I would that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. And then from Luke 23, the last words spoken by Jesus from the cross. Then Jesus crying with a loud voice said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. I want you to take a close look at your hands. Hold them out there and take a close look, both sides. Are they large or are they small? Are they calloused or are they soft? Are they gnarled or are they smooth? You know, your hands say an awful lot about you. They're unique. Like the individuality of your, uh, of your fingerprints, there are no hands in this world that are exactly like yours. Your hands are a phenomenal creation of God. There are four things that I want you to remember this morning about hands. The first is this. God has the whole world in his hands, including your personal life, as well as the awful agony that our Savior endured on that first Good Friday. The second, the hands of Jesus are real. They're real flesh and bone, and, and they really were pierced for the sins of the world. The third, your hands are capable of doing good or evil depending upon where your heart is. And the final point, point four, you're in good hands when your life is in the hands of the Heavenly Father. Now, I want, to, I want to expand on each of those first four thoughts. The first, God has the whole world in his hands. You know the song, don't you? He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the itsy bitsy baby in his hands. Well, I want you to know that the words of that song are telling the truth. Our God created this whole universe and he's running it. The history of this world is really his story. Listen to what the psalmist says in Psalm 95. He says, in his hands are, are the depths of the earth. The height of the mountains is his also. The sea is his, for he made it. For his hands formed the dry land. Now, this truth can be terrifying if you don't know that the creator God is a loving and a tender father. It's a fearful thing, the writer of Hebrews says, to fall into the hands of the living God. And it's a very real thing, too. When Jesus was on trial before Pilate, the governor said, don't you know that I have the power to release you or, to, or, or the power to crucify you? And Jesus said to him, no, you don't. No, you don't. You have no power over me unless it's given to you 
from above. Only God has the power. And it's good for us to remember that because, you see, the awful, awful sufferings and death of Jesus in our place was because that's what God, the heavenly creator God in heaven, wanted to happen to Jesus. He willed it to happen to Jesus. God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Isaiah said, and we read those words before, it was the will of the Lord to bruise him, and, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The God who has the whole world in his hands is a God whose hands are working for you. He gave his son for you. He willed him to die for you. Point number four, two. The hands of Jesus are real. I want you to imagine the, the hands of Jesus on that cross. They're real. They're real flesh and blood and bone. The blood is streaming from those hands. And nails were really placed through those hands, nailing him to the cross. Now I want you to look at your hands. Do you have them pierced? We may have our ears pierced, but I don't think anyone has their hands pierced. But Jesus did. Jesus' hands were pierced. They were pierced for you. That's important to remember. When Jesus appeared to his disciples after the resurrection, he showed them his hands and his feet. Remember that Bible passage? And he said to them, see my hands and my feet. It's me. Handle me and see. Isaiah said, and we read these words before, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole. And with his stripes, we are healed. Those are the wonderful healing hands of Jesus. Number three, our hands can be used for evil or good, depending upon where our heart is. Just before Jesus was crucified, the, the, the writer Mark reports that Jesus told his disciples that the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. And then shortly after, Jesus, uh, uh, Mark states, and they laid hands on him and seized him. Who seized him? I want you to know that those who seized him the hands that seized him were the hands of religious people. Are we any better? Do our hands ever get us into trouble? When our Lord was stretched his hands out on the cross, he was carrying all the sins that we do with our hands. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, James says. Purify your hearts, he utters. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. Now our Lord asks us to use our hands in godly ways. I desire that passage was that we read that in every place men should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or quarreling, praising with clean hands to do his will. Another children's song, two little eyes to look to God, two little ears to hear his word, two little feet to walk his ways. And what's the last line? Hands to serve him all my day. It's just a children's song, but it rings true for every single child of God. It rings true for you. And number four, you're in good hands. Think now about what we've been talking about up to this point. When you know that he's got the whole world in his hands, 
And when you know that Jesus' hands were pierced for you, and when you know that your hands have been cleansed by him, then you can know day in and day out that you are in good hands, safe in the hands of our Heavenly Father. That's how Jesus lived. He lived confidently that way, and, and that's the way that he died. Remember the last words that he spoke from the cross. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And there we have that word again, the word hands. The Father's hands hold us in life and in death. The psalmist, Psalm 91, 94 says, For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and, and the sheep of his hand. In Psalm 19, our Lord promises that he will give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. On his hands, on their hands, they will bear you up. He even has his angels conscripted care for you. But Jesus' words are probably the climax. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And I give them eternal life and here it comes. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. My friend, you're in good hands. And you can pray. You can pray it every morning and you can pray it every night. You can pray it when you're well and you can pray it when you're sick. You can pray these same words that Jesus spoke before he died. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. A blessed Good Friday to you. And now may the peace of God that passes all our understanding Keep your hearts and minds centered in Christ Jesus. Amen.